Welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Crossing Paths Television Ministry. My name is Don Reed Sr. from Hermitage, Pennsylvania, and we have a year starting out now. And you know, every year should be a opportunity for you to tell somebody about Jesus. So I'm going to sort of let the name of this program here today a new revolution, not resolution, because they are broken within three days after I'm going to quit smoking, drinking, da, 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 and it never happens. So I want to call, you need a revolution in your life. When you have a revolution or take over our problems or do some of the things that's happening today, because it's damaging. But now we want to have a revolution in our life and create a new person. And you cannot do it yourself. I tried it. Many people tried it. But there is one person we're going to talk about here today, and his name is Jesus. And I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm going to read you some scripture now, and it's on the screen. Uh, Matt's put it up there, and we're going to read it real slow, and the whole message is going to be based about what we're talking about here right now. And you know, I have a hard time seeing, so I have a, these glasses that I'm putting on, and this will help me to read. But I'm going to go to... Uh, uh, to Mark 5, verse 1 through 20. Now, of course, some of you may, that's the New Testament. Uh, I didn't know too much, believe me, when I was going to college, but it says, And they came unto the other side of the sea. Now, we're talking about Jesus, into the country of the Galileans. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him one of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit. That was me. That was me, and that could have been you, and it could be you today. I had a spirit, believe me, it was so filthy and ugly. Believe me, I had no idea what salvation was. I, was, I knew what this what being a flesh was. I knew, I knew that I had a body and a soul and a spirit, but I didn't know what that really meant. And when, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him nor... No, not with uh, chains. He was he had chains on him. It said because that he had been often bound with letters, with the fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked aside by him, and the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. So this man was literally strong. Talk about uh, when the strong men in the Bible, Samson, for instance. This man was demon possessed, like I was. And I don't like to admit it, but I'm going to show you that maybe you are possessed with some kind of a spirit out there today. And there's a way that you can get rid of it. And here, and always night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. And when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. Thank God I met Jesus. I'm going to tell you something. I met Jesus. I was a man that was dominant, and demon possessed, call it what you want. And when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him, and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. He recognized him, for he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. When I got saved and born again, Jesus said to the evil spirit, Come out of him. And he did. When I prayed by faith, when I received Christ as my Lord and Savior. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. Legion means many, many. Some, some say there's certain numbers for Legion. But he had many demon spirits. A lot of people out there have more than one demon spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? He said, my name's Legion. And he besought him how much he would not send him away out of the, out of the country. Now there was there an eye unto the mountain, a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, send us into the swine that we may enter unto them. Jesus cast out all the demons into me. All of them. And I'm going to prove it to you today as I sit here. And for, for with Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000, and they were choked in the sea. And they that led the swine fled and told in the city and in the country, and they went out to see that what was done here. People started coming to see me 
what happened to me in your life? Are they doing that to you? Are you different? If you're not, I mean, everybody don't have to be demon possessed in the sense that I was, but I'm gonna tell you something. I'm a new man today. I'm gonna to read on. And then they came to Jesus to see him and that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind and they were afraid. Now there, I wanna, in his right mind. When I become born again, I got a right mind. Oh man, the Bible says, study yourself to prove. It says, have this mind in you that was in Christ Jesus. How do you do about that? By studying yourself approved. They that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine. Now here's what people are doing. You ain't gonna believe this. Here's what they said. And they began to pray him to depart out of their scene. He caused a big unemployment problem in that city. Can you imagine? They wanted him to leave. Get out of here. And when he was come out into the ship, he had been possessed with the devil, prayed him that he might be with him. Now, here's, here's the whole thing about the message today. Howbeit, when he came out of the ship, he said, Howbeit, Jesus suffered him not, but he said, The devil prayed him that he might be with him. No, here's what happened. Jesus suffered him that said unto him, Go home now. Go home. Now, this is my whole message here today. And I'm proving here today. I'm sitting in a chair, and I want you to follow me through what happened to me 46 years ago, and I had a revolution in my life. I changed my life because I met Jesus. No more, no more would I ever want to go back to that life. Now listen, and he said, and he said, go home and tell thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee and hath had compassion on thee. And he departed and began to depart how great things had done for him and all men had arrived. This man said, okay, Jesus, I'm going with you. I want to go tell the world. And Jesus said, no, go home and tell what great things God's done for you. You know, people, that was on a Friday night, November 22nd, 1974 that I received Jesus Christ in my, in my heart, in my home. I was standing there and, I, and on my couch, I got down, I got saved. And you know what people, that's when I started my walk with Jesus Christ. Now I got a little picture here, I'm proud of this. Go home and tell what great people, what great things done. This is the home that I went into, 3755 Moorfield Road I lost everything, my motel. I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm not gonna give my testimony of all the past and the present, only I can tell you what the message is today. People are getting saved, but they're not going home. They're going out in the world and they're not equipped. And they end up in big problems. They should not went out. There's nothing wrong with you getting saved. This is my home where I put my office in the cellar of my home Behind my desk, I started doing tax returns again. I was allowed to do that according to my agreement when I sold my accounting practice. My motel was repossessed in the cellar of my home. I started my walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. Guess what? I had one client, me. One client, me. Go home and tell what great things God has done for you. You know what I did, people? That was a Friday. Sunday night, I went into the Methodist Church in Sharpsville, Pennsylvania. Now get this, three days, two days later, what did the lady at the well, what did the lady at the well do? The lady at the well went out and started evangelizing. Remember the story last week when we talked about these shepherds, they started evangelizing? I went to my church two days later, Sunday night, stood up in front of Jack Stevenson, and guess who was sitting in that church? Now don't forget people, this is 1974. 1974, in the pew, way out, sat Joyce Titus with her husband, Wayne Titus. This is how I met her originally, and of course you know the story, her husband died, my wife died, and I married her. She was there the night, she said, I stood up and held onto the rail. And I told people, this is the first Christmas in 20 years 
that I haven't had a drink and I am born again. And she said the crowd just clapped and said they didn't hear testimonies like that in the Methodist Church. Well, I started my walk. Here's where I want to tell you. I started meeting people. I have a picture here now. One of my big clients that come in to me asked me for some advice. This is a Jewish lady. Now believe me, people, this lady, I, I witnessed to her, she was a believer. She become a believer. She had gave this, she went and drew this picture for me. Now I didn't even understand the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But here is the story of Abraham on Mount Moriah saying, God, you want me to sacrifice my son? I've waited years and years. You know, in Genesis 15, Abraham said, Genesis 15, 6, he said, Abraham believed on the Lord and it counted unto him for righteousness. But in the 22nd of Je chapter of Genesis, God said, okay, I'm going to put you to test. Do you know people? Abraham, in my teaching, did not, he, he believed the Lord, but he took the test. And he went and did what he said he was going to do, but God miraculously intervened. Go read that Gen in Genesis 22 uh, chapter about Abraham sacrificing his son. Then I started crossing paths with people. I started telling people about Jesus Christ in the cellar of my home. You know what? I was called there. Then people started calling me. Then we had a lot of ministries that started up. Now, I'm not knocking ministries, but here's what some of the people were doing. And this is my message. Go home and tell your husband and wife, your children first, your family, your nieces, your nephews, your uncles, your cousins, and then go out and start telling people about Jesus. Get schooled. Read the Bible. Find a church. A lot of people when them dies went out. They sold their homes. My brother-in-law, one was one, him and his wife, sold their home, went down to the old PTL, sold everything. Two years later, you know what happened to that. We have one pastor that started a church here, some locally. They had a nice church, 200 people, 200. A floozy come along, left his wife, kids. Do you know that's happening today? People are called. They're not qualified. They're going out. They're putting on major television programs, and they shouldn't because they're not qualified. He said, go home. And Jesus said, go home and study yourself approved. Read the Bible. Tell people about Jesus. Then I will send you out. Here I am behind the desk telling people about Jesus now, being a tax man. I had sold my accounting practice for $20,000 to a CPA firm so I could pay my debts when I lost my motel. I'm in the cellar of my home, in that house. And people started coming in one by one. And I started telling them about Jesus. I had their W-2s. They were trapped. They had to hear the gospel. One lady called me and she said, Mr. Reed, I want you to witness to my husband. I'm paying in advance for the tax return. I said, sure, the man come in. I did his tax return, and I didn't witness to him. Two weeks later, she called me. She said, Mr. Reed, why didn't you witness to my father? I said, I'm going to tell you something. I made him a friend. Him and I become a friend. Guess what? No, I won't tell you. Years later, he come back. He couldn't wait to come back to see me to do his tax return. Then, on the top of the tax return, I have not born again yet. He received Christ. Many of these people receive it. See, I had to be right where I, down in my cellar until I went where I am today. And then people are today, which I'm trying to emphasize. If you get saved and born again, I want you to be excited. I want you to go out and tell people about Jesus. But don't go out alone. Find some friends. I found some friends, Bible studies, seven days a week, five days a week, me and Frank Kamovich. There was a Bill Rogers, I call him for advice. I have Jim, Jim Lee, another friend of mine, him and his wife. I, I started getting advice off all these people. We had Frank Kamovich. We had Bible studies. I had uh, George Franklin. We would have Bible studies. Me and Les Kirk at Eaton Park. We had Bible studies for 10 years, five days a week. Go home and tell what great things people has done for you. Then God called me into the ministry where I'm at today. And guess what? I'm still behind the desk, still behind the desk. You know I can prove that, people? Because you've been in my office. Here is my new office.
My office is on, on 475 South Buell Farm Dake, uh, Drive in Hermitage, Pennsylvania. Now, this is my current office, but I still start telling people about Jesus. Then I got involved. There was another ministry. He asked me to be on the 700 Club, so I went on the 700 Club. And here I am, I started now. I started running tours to Israel, and I'm still, I'm still, I am still behind my desk telling people about Jesus. You see, people, when, when Jesus told that man to go out, when that was demon-possessed, that was me. I went and did that, and I'm here today to prove you that this is true. This is one of my unbelievable, I love it, this picture because it's James Irwin that walked on the moon. I interviewed this man personally at one of my banquets. So you can see it started somewhere, but God moved me a little bit further into a television later on. Then I started doing things. I started running tours to Israel. Now, one of the things I wanted, here's one of my tour pictures. I've been to Israel 14 times, 14 times. And I'll tell you something. Here's one of my tours there. I've taken over 250 people to Israel over the years. That just goes to show you, as I stayed behind my desk, I was doing both things. I was witnessing and doing exactly what God says. And then God moved me into a television ministry called Crossing Pass. Now, I want to say this today as I end up this message here, and I mean to tell you something. Sure, I went to one church and I started preaching. You know what, people? All I can tell you is that people started calling me. I've been in over a thousand churches, Bible studies across the country. Today, I call people for advice. I'm not afraid to admit when God said to me, Don, I'm going to use you. And that was in 1974. In the living room of that house I showed you before, Matt had the picture on, in the cellar of my home. That's where I had my office. Upstairs of that house is where I got saved, on my hands and knees. And I got that scripture right away when God says about the man in the tomb, go home and tell what great things people, God has done for you. Now I'm gonna tell you something. Most important thing today in this message is, where are you? Are you called into the ministry? I mean, that's good. I want you to be called into the ministry, but you have to start somewhere. One lady come into my office, I'm doing her tax return. I meet these people now and I'm doing their tax return. She said, Don, she said, Don, guess what? I found the perfect church. I'm witnessing to her, joking when I do. I said, ma'am, if you join it, it won't be perfect anymore. That's the last time I saw her. I lost one client that I know of in 50 years that I've been in the income tax business. Today, one client I started with, today, 3,000 clients, probably 200 corporation partnerships, 22 employees. You know why? I started what Jesus said. I went home and started, and I started telling people about Jesus. I want to emphasize today, people, I don't want to discourage you from starting a ministry. I want you first to get into the Word of God. How do you get into the Word of God? Pick up a Bible. Pick up a Bible that you pretty well can read and understand. I don't care what version you get, but get something. Eventually, you find some friends and they'll tell you if you've got the wrong scriptures, if you're reading the wrong one. I, pretty soon I had Mormons coming to me. I had Jehovah Witnesses rapping on my door. Come on in. I started telling about Jesus. I had more, two Mormons come to my door. My wife will tell you, uh, on my house, my new house where I moved into, where we're doing our television programs today. They come in and said, can we talk to you? I said, sure. They sat down on the couch. I started listening to them for two minutes. Ten minutes they listened to me when I told them about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They knew nothing about Genesis 22. You know what they said? My wife's sitting there. You want me to, can we come back? I said, you sure can. They come back, both of them. And I went into the next time and gave them some more. They spoke two minutes. I spoke 20 minutes. And they wanted to come back. The third time, they said, can we bring our leader with us? I said, bring him in. He brought him in, and he said, no, there's no sense of us staying here anymore, and they left. Why? Because me, I stayed behind my desk. I would have never met these people, Mormons, Jehovah Witness, Catholics, Baptists, Presbyterians, 
That was my calling. And God honored that today as I sit in my home here today doing our television program in Hermitage, Pennsylvania under a ministry called Crossing Paths TV. So you think, well, what should I do? I'm going to tell you. First, pick up the Word of God. No, I'll supersede that. First, ask Jesus Christ to come into your life. You might say, well, Don, I've done so many things, it's impossible for me to get saved. No, the Bible says, all, all, Romans 3, 23 says, all have sinned in short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death. The ages of sin and death. Ephesians 2, 8 says, for by grace are you saved through faith, not all, at least any man should boast. It is a gift. I took that gift 46 years ago, November 22nd, 1974. And I did what Jesus told the man that it was demon possessed, go home and tell what great things God has done for you. You've seen the picture of my house. You've seen the picture of my, uh, uh, my desk inside, or rather inside of my house. There was a desk. You've seen the picture of the office now where I'm at. I did exactly what the Bible said, and God honored that. And I want to tell you today, this year, make this a new year. I want to tell you, I cannot emphasize how important it is for you. Once you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, once you do that, pick up the Bible. Please, don't believe me. Don't believe me. Read the Word of God. Find a church. Find a fellowship. Find a Bible study. Prove me wrong. I can tell you that my changed life proves they can say what they want about me, but they cannot deny my changed life. I have so many friends. I started banquets. I had 30-some banquets. We had over 10,000 people attend our banquets, and then I had to give it up because of my health and other reasons. Today, I'm still telling you that Jesus is real. And now, get this. Remember I said a new revolution, a new idea? Now I'm going to write another book at the age of almost 90. This name of this book is going to be called The New Dawn, D-A-W-N, in parentheses, Dawn. It's going to show a picture in the background of what I came out of. And I saw the light when Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. Do you know Jesus? Ladies and gentlemen, I can't go any further and tell you how it happened. I lost my motel, you know that. Lost in Vegas, went down the cellar of my home, started a television ministry. I started and founded the first 24-hour Christian television in the Shenango Valley. <clears throat> Me, a man by the name of Scott Kreps, years ago, 20 years ago, as a result, you're watching Cornerstone TV on whatever channel you're watching us here today. Is my accomplishment great? I want Jesus honored. Did I play basketball in Madison Square Garden? Yes. Was I a great athlete? Yes. Did I have money? Yes. Did I have a motel? Yes. Did they fly me to Vegas? Yes. Had I had everything in the flesh? Yes. But today, I want to tell you, I stand as a new creature in Christ because of John 3.3. 3. When Billy Graham used to put his programs on, I would watch his program, even though I was drinking beer. And I'd go out after that and stay out for hours. And then one day, one day, one day, the demon was cast out of me. I come out of the graveyard and I stand in, love in front of you today, people, or sit here in front of you people. I'm not perfect in English, I can tell you one thing, but I love Jesus. Do you love Jesus? I can't emphasize today is a day. Today, this year, whatever year we're talking about, you're going to be every year, January 1st. Start out with a new revolution. Ah, tell people, tell Jesus. Now I'm going to say a prayer, which I did years ago. Ephesians 2.8 says, For by grace are you saved. You saw that picture of Abraham on Mount Moriah. You saw that picture. I started by faith. I didn't feel nothing. I thought I'd be the coldest cucumber that ever come down the pike until God one day in the cellar when I was sitting in the dark, he said, Don, 
you want a feeling, go take a drink. No, he didn't say go take a liquor drink. He said, you want a feeling, go to a funeral. Go to a baseball game. Go to a football game. Go out, go and see the beauty of the earth. Go to a wedding. Go and see a movie. You can get a feeling, but you're not saved on feelings. You're saved on faith and faith alone. Faith in the cross of Jesus Christ. Faith that Jesus came in like we said last week. Faith, faith alone. Faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I want you to make that commitment today and ask Jesus to come into your life. Romans 10 and 9, 10 says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And say, Lord, write my name today, this day, in the Lamb's Book of Life. And right now, Lord Jesus, help me. Say this, help me, tell him your name. Help me to change. I cannot change, Lord. I give my life to you. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I want to serve you to the best of my ability. We have a, we have a Bible we will send you free, postage paid, a little Bible which we give away if you want to put it in your pocket, free. We have a telephone number on the screen. It'll be there. Matt will leave it there. We have a box number, 1181 Hermitage, Pennsylvania. He'll leave that screen there. Give you time to write it and get it. Call us, there'll be somebody on there at all times. And watch out for something coming out in this year alone because we're gonna have a Bible study over the telephone and you can call to get information on that. God bless you. And let me just close this and say, I love you. I hope that I can come down to your level and show you that Jesus Christ is real. And here are these words, go home. Go home, go home and tell what great things God has done for you now. Go home and tell what great things God has done for you.